Everybody, it's Tyler here with team number 971 Spartan Robotics out of California at Chessy Champs, checking out this incredible robot that they have here on Behind the Bumpers. And I'm here today with Kenneth, Amanda, Matthew, and Millen. And of course, the 971 building great machines every single year. Can't wait to talk about uh, some of the different functions to go through. Uh, really cool vision, and I really like their shooter. All here coming up on Behind the Bumpers. Giving you a voice. Making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. We'd like to thank Stryker for their continued support of First Updates Now. Stryker's internship portal is now open and available. Discover internships and rotational programs located around the world, including their headquarters in Michigan, when you go to careers.stryker.com and click on students and graduates. We'd also like to thank Kettering University. Kettering University is where robotic students come for their education. Over 30% of those who attend Kettering University were in high school robotics, and you can keep going with their BattleBots, VexU, eSports, and FIRST mentorship programs. If you are a U.S. student grades 8 through 12, scan the QR code to stay up to date on info and events happening at Kettering and get a free Kettering t-shirt when you sign up by December 12, 2021. So, Kenneth, we're going to be starting out here with the intake. Talk to me a little about what's gone into it, maybe some of the iterations that you've gone through uh, throughout this last couple of years. Yeah, so first of all, this intake kind of extends, and these are the arms to it right here and here. This is controlled by, oh yeah, sorry. These are the arms right here. And this is cons controlled by a Versa Planetary gearbox chain here. And then, yeah, within this intake, there's also a roller here, which we use a Falcon, mo Falcon motor to power. Uh, and what's some of the material that's like on the rollers? Yeah, so this is gaff tape to hold the balls with friction. And this helps us like take in balls more easily. So in here, we have the hopper, right? We call this the washing machine because of the way it spins. So it spins this way, goes all the way like that. And this hopper basically rotates the balls around so that it'll feed it into this uh, accelerator here with, with these pulleys. And the reason you do that too is having it all go one direction because if you both, if you fed them both in, they start jamming, right? Yeah, so. so the reason why we go one direction exactly right, it's the balls start jamming if we just put it in place. Have you had any other issues with like jamming or balls popping out or anything yeah, like that? Yeah, so we had various issues. And the, why we, the reason why we chose this was because the balls kept on jamming if sure. we kept it constant. So another thing this does is this intake goes back and forth like this in order to create more space for the balls to go through here, which seemed to help us for this problem. Another problem we had was that the balls, when we shake this, there's a lot of balls flying around. So we have this flap here so that when it's retracted, the balls can't come out of here. So yeah. One thing I want to ask you on the uh, intake itself is that we've seen kind of a, a wide range of teams where a lot of teams are doing kind of that floppy intake, so to speak. Yours is pretty rigid. Can you talk a little about some of your decision process on that? So I would say it's rigid, but it's also very flexible at the sure. same time. So when, when we go to competition, we bang into a lot of stuff. This intake is all machined in our, in our router. And the reason why it's made out of Lexan is because when you push it against it, it won't bend. It'll go back to its original place. And the flexibility of this full intake is what truly makes it really amazing. Well, let's work our way up on the robot here, going into this uh, tower area, into your shooter and turret. So, Amanda, talk to me a little bit about uh, what's gone into this. Yeah, so once the balls are funneled in through this intake and washing machine, as Kenneth called it, they uh, go up this accelerator tower, which has these pulleys and wheels, as you can see there, and they get pulled up top. And this is what we call the accelerator tower because it helps accelerate the ball so that once it hits this flywheel up here, it, does, it doesn't suddenly have to go from zero speed to a fast speed to be able to shoot a very accurate shot. One of the things I noticed uh, when I was watching a couple of your matches is that uh, from a shooting perspective, it does seem like uh, you guys take a little bit of time to kind of shoot each power cell as it goes through, but it also seems more accurate than I've seen a lot of teams as well too. So when you're looking at like the game itself, uh, was that part of the, like, the decision process? Like, hey, we might take a little bit longer, but we want to go for more accuracy? Yeah, so if we didn't take longer, if we had shot all five of them like, straight in a yeah. row, this would slow down a little bit, which would just affect our accuracy. So it actually almost affected it as much that it wouldn't always go into the two-point hole. So we decided that giving it a little bit of time to really align gives us a much better chance of success in getting it into that three-point goal, which will get us a lot more points in the game. Talk to me about a couple of things. Uh, I'd love to hear more about the uh, flywheel that you're using on here and then uh, for adjusting the hood using the lead screw as well. Yeah, so this flywheel, you can see it's made of aluminum and actually inside of here, you can see Right here we have these tin foil strips, and they're really small, but they actually help balance this wheel sure. so that it flies really, or it spins really, really smoothly. 
And then you can see, our, see back here is this hood. And this hood can be adjusted down and up to adjust the trajectory of our shot. And that really goes hand in hand with the vision that Milland will talk about later. And also something really cool about this robot is this turret. It can spin really fast all the way around. It can spin 100, almost 360 degrees. And that's why we have this, what we call the umbilical cord attached to this pulley here. So that helps control all these cords so that it can spin fast and not get anything tangled up. That's really cool. I like that a lot. So let's move on uh, to your climber next, talking about what goes into that uh, and talking about uh, the stages that go into it and how it's been working out for you so far. Yeah, so we have a pretty interesting climber design. We've, we have we kind of had to iterate it because our, uh, our original design didn't work. Um, so we actually just finished building this climber. Oh, sure. Um, so instead of actually using like a ratchet for a winch, we use a friction brake. Um, West Coast Products sells these. Um, and essentially, the, the way the climber is actuated upwards is we have these constant four springs here, and then we have the winch here. But to, in, in order to go up, you have to back drive the winch. So you, you basically back drive the, the friction brake. Sure. And so going up is actually almost as hard as climbing itself, or it's just as hard as climbing itself. Um, so yeah, so you basically you back drive that, constant force spring pulls it up with uh, each of these at 30 pounds of force. Um, and then yeah, then you winch your way up off this, the winch right here. And the, the friction brake is supposed to prevent back drive. In our last match it didn't, <laughs> so we had to actually tune the spring here and um, give it, put a little more force on it to increase the friction, but yeah. Hopefully uh, it'll I, work next time. Yeah, so I know we'll let you get back to work here in just yeah. a minute as well. I do want to wrap up with some vision uh, on your robot. Uh, we were testing some before that we saw some. Millen talked to us a little about uh, vision, what's gone into it for that. Yeah. Yeah, so this year our robot, we decided to do a little different for vision. Instead of usually just looking at the reflective tape, Yeah. we decided to instead look for key points on the target. So what we first do to get our vision is we just take a picture like in front of the target. And then we find, we use a software called SIFT that finds a bunch of features in the target, like the corners of the target, the polygon, and like all the text there's. So it finds those, it finds the position where they, those are. And then when we're on the field, we're taking pictures, it finds those same features, then it matches them to the ones on the original image that we took when we were in front of it. And based on that, it can figure out where the robot is in respect to the target. And we pick, based on that, we pick a turret, and, turret angle, so we horizontally align it, then we pick a hood angle, and then we uh, pick flywheel speed, so accelerator and finisher speeds, based on how far. So and all that's being determined through that then, huh? Yeah, so, so, okay. so basically, we also have five cameras, five Raspberry Pis. Yeah. So basically, like, no matter where we're on the field, we can get an eye on the target. And then if we, suppose we're like aligned perfectly, then this is like the best camera, because it's aligned like at the top. So then we'll weight this one higher and we'll kind of like basically not fully discard them, but weight down these. Awesome. Well, 971 Spartan Robotics, once again, thanks for taking the time to tell us about your robot, what's gone into it. Love hearing about technology that really makes it work. So good luck, of course, here at Chessie Champs and looking forward to what your team brings in future seasons as well. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thanks to Kettering University for their support of this video. Don't just sit in class. Kettering University is the only school in the U.S. that allows you to work as an engineer your first year with their three-month-on, three-month-off co-op programs. If you are a U.S. student grades 8 through 12, scan the QR code to stay up to date on info and events happening at Kettering and get a free Kettering t-shirt when you sign up by December 12, 2021. We'd like to thank Stryker for their continued support of First Updates Now. Stryker's internship portal is now open and available. Discover internships and rotational programs located around the world, including their headquarters in Michigan, when you go to careers.stryker.com and click on Students and Graduates. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.